I grew up in the Regal Park Forest Hills area. Lived in Queens my whole entire life, and it was vibrant. It was diverse. When I was in junior high school in, in the eighth grade, a program called The Beacon opened up, and it was a youth center. And my friends and I, that's where we met the group of caring and trusting adults who provided us a space to just be us. I have been part of services of QCH since the age of 14. If it wasn't for the program and the agency, I wouldn't know who I would be today. And because of the opportunities of the program, we were given a, a voice. I get up every day and have an opportunity to be a part of a young person's life. You okay? Something happened in school today? No, you know, if you want to talk, I'm here. Okay? It seems like something's bothering you. Like, you don't have to physically say it, like, your, your whole body language. Well, whatever is going on, I hope you feel better, okay? All right? I'll have some lunch. I'll see you later, all right? I hope you have a better afternoon with us, okay? Everyone needs help sometimes, you know? If we could give them a little step to help them towards what they're trying to achieve, when they thrive, we thrive. When you could personally see change in how they perceive the world, you see that the work impacted them. Something resonated with them. With quality and integrity, we invest in people for long term. Examples. Examples of that. <laughs> me? Okay, give me. <laughs> All right. I'll get to you next time. Uh, you said you started in, in QCH like, as a participant. Yeah. They saw it in you that you were able to do more with the program, and so they gave you a chance, and that was an investment in the long run. That melted my heart. Just sorry. I'm getting a little teary eyed. <laughs> um, yeah. I've had the, the honor and privilege of being impacted by the work. Never thought this girl from Queens would be leading a community center. I have this big extended family and um, I'm just happy that I played a role, but I know it wasn't just me, it was a village. It is my honor to stand before you all in solidarity about how human services workers deserve equitable wages so they continue to do life-saving work. And that starts with hashtag just pay. The work of the human service workers is vital to our city. And because of our work, people are able to live better lives. If there is adequate government funding, it can really enhance us to provide even more services tap into neighborhoods that we maybe don't have existing programs in. New York City is a city that never sleeps. The nonprofit world is a sector that never sleeps. We work into the evening, we work on weekends. So it's about 9.13. Now I gotta commute home, about two buses. So my commute's about like an hour. And this particular area is a transportation desert. Everyone looks at New York City as the model of being interconnected into our communities. But it sends a strong message that 
we don't pay our workers their fair share. It's wrong. We're asking just for fair, equal pay. What's so hard about that ask? We still have lives. We still have families that we need to take care of. I might one day have to make the decision like, can I financially survive here? Every day I, I continue to be positive that change will come and I get up to do this work because someone needs me. How I need them, they need me. And I'll, I'll sit here if I have to take four buses, I'll go. If it means that I could take my talents and my experience and hopefully make it some type of impact in someone's life, I'm all for it.